Friends, in session number 31 of the series on military law, uh, we would see Armed Forces Tribunal, what are its powers and authority, and that would also bring out its role and functions. Uh, you would recall that uh, the Supreme Court in PPS Bedi's case had indicated that it is now time uh, in fact, it was then the time to come up with a tribunal which can provide an independent fora or a meaningful right of appeal and that ultimately led to setting up of the Armed Forces Tribunal uh, which derives the authority from an act by the Union Parliament. Uh, section 14 pertains to jurisdiction, power and authority in service matters. And what are service matters? We have already seen that it takes up matters like induction, promotion, confirmation uh, and alike. Now, clause one says tribunal shall exercise all the jurisdiction and authority that was immediately before that day exercisable by all courts except the Supreme Court or High Court now, when they are uh, exercising jurisdiction or articles 226 and 227 of the Constitution in relation to all service matters. Uh, clause 2 says that a person agreed by an order pertaining to any service matter may make an application to the tribunal. So he comes up before the tribunal by putting up an application and that has to be in such form and it is a to be accompanied by such documents and a fees has to be paid as may be prescribed. On receipt of uh, an application, tribunal shall, if satisfied after due inquiry, that it is fit for adjudication by it, admit such applications. And in case if the tribunal is not satisfied, it may dismiss the application after recording its reasons and of course they have to be in writing. Uh, if uh, there is a need for adjudicating an application, tribunal shall have and it has been vested with the same powers like a civil court under the CPC while trying a suit for insofar as summoning and enforcing the attendance of uh, any person, it can examine a person on oath, it can require the discovery and production of documents. It can receive evidence on affidavit. Uh, the tribunal can requisition any public records or documents wherever they may be located in any office, issue commission for the examination of witnesses. It can review its own decision and it can dismiss an application for default or it can even decide it ex parte. The tribunal is empowered to decide both questions of law and facts that may be raised, that may come up before it. Uh, then in uh, section 5, it is laid down that all the jurisdiction, powers and authority exercisable under this act in relation to appeal against any order, decision, finding or sentence passed by a, a court martial. Any person agreed by an order, decision, finding or sentence passed by a court martial may prefer an appeal as prescribed. So that just shows that there is this effective opportunity provided for appeal against a court martial and it is also uh, empowered to grant bail to any accused in military custody with or without any conditions considered necessary. Now, this power is quite significant because uh, till the enactment of Armed Forces Tribunal Act, there was no provision under military law uh, for grant of bail to any accused. And the tribunal shall allow an appeal against conviction by a court martial in uh, specific cases where the finding is legally not sustainable due to any reason. That is ground number one. The second is that finding involves wrong decision on a question of law. 
or if there is a material irregularity observed in the course of the trial result, resulting in uh, miscarriage of justice but in any other case may dismiss the appeal where the tribunal considers that no miscarriage of justice is likely to be caused or has actually resulted to the appellant. So therefore, this clause C is only applicable, it surfaces when there is a substantial miscarriage of justice. It has also been given power to substitute the finding of a court martial or a finding of guilty for any other offense for which the offender could have been lawfully found guilty by the court martial and pass a sentence afresh. On the other hand, if sentence is found to be excessive, illegal, in that eventuality, the tribunal may remit, mitigate or commute the powers which were there with the court martial, uh, with the court martial, uh, with the confirming authority now the same powers of remit, mitigate and commute are available to the AFT. Another very significant uh, authority given to the tribunal is it can enhance the sentence awarded by a court martial. You would recall that this power is not available under the Army Act to the, convening, uh, to the confirming authority, but AFT has the power. It can enhance the sentence. Uh, then it can release the appellant if sentenced to imprisonment on parole with or without conditions. It can suspend a sentence or pass any other order as it thinks fit and appropriate in the circumstances of the case. Then under section 10 of the AFT, there are provisions relating to retrial where the conviction of a person by court martial for an offense has been quashed. He shall not be liable to be tried again for that offense. However, tribunal shall have the power of quashing a conviction to make an order authorizing the appellant to be retried by court martial in the interest of justice. And therefore, the order by the AFT in such a situation under section 16 would indicate uh, that these, these are the grounds in the interest of justice for retrial. The tribunal while hearing and deciding an appeal under section 15 shall have the power under section 17 to order the attendance of witnesses, production of documents and to receive evidence. So these in fact are substantial powers available as an appellate authority acting independently which the AFT is. It can obtain reports from court martial. It can decide any question in order to do justice in the case. It can order reference of any question for inquiry and appoint a person with a special expert knowledge to act as an assessor. And these are contained uh, under the head powers of tribunal on appeal. Uh, Section 18 uh, indicates and empowers the tribunal where an application has been made under section 14 or an appeal under section 15 to make such order as to cause as it may deem just. Now this also uh, is uh, significant because such a power is not provided under the Army Act to the confirming authority, but uh, the AFT has this power. Uh, the powers of uh, contempt are also there uh, under section 19. Any person who is guilty of contempt of tribunal by using any insulting or threatening language or where he causes interruption or disturb the proceedings, in such a case tribunal can on conviction award up to three years rigorous imprisonment. Thus it becomes clear that the provisions of Armed Forces Tribunal Act 2007 have been so designed in a special manner which give a meaningful right of appeal to the persons who come within its jurisdiction and in matters falling under its jurisdiction which may relate 
टू सर्विस मैटर्स और कोर्ट मार्शल थैंक यू